HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Please give these student athletes a huge round of applause for how they've achieved this season. Participating student athletes, coaches, and contest officials have worked diligently to prepare for today's competition. Really? Please show your appreciation by demonstrating good sportsmanship and respect for all in attendance. Ensure that your behaviors reflect values that should be identified with these student athletes. Assume responsibility for your behavior and the behavior of those around you. If you require assistance, please call upon an MIA school official, our police officer, or myself. My name is Ryan Donahue. I'm the athletic director here at Stoughton High School. Any verbal or written or physical conduct related to race, gender, ethnicity, disability, sexual orientation, or religion shall not be tolerated. Could subject uh, the violator to ejection and may result in penalties being assessed against your team. Our great nation has preserved, uh, per persevered through the leadership and sacrifices of men and women who have served or are currently serving in our armed forces. We invite both veterans and current military personnel to stand. We thank you all for our service to our country. Now, I invite you all to stand for our national anthem. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Stoughton High School for the South Division II sectional semifinals between fifth-seeded fifth Stoughton and first-seeded Hopkinton. Tom Nappy alongside Larry Sacklad for the call, Joe Frackleton on camera for this playoff matchup between the Stoughton Black Knights and the Hopkinton Hillers. Taking the mound for the Hillers today is Josh Fisher. Let's get right to the Stoughton lineup. Leading things off is the second baseman, George Currier. Batting second, right fielder, Jacob Kaplan. Hitting third, the shortstop, Robert Seaman. Batting cleanup, the first baseman, James Ganes the third. The catcher, Michael Nazaro, hitting fifth. Batting sixth is the center fielder, Gian Swarzeski. And batting seventh, the left fielder, Kyle Gagnon. Hitting eighth, the DH, Noah Johnson. And Brady Conlon, the third baseman, hitting ninth for the fifth seeded Stoughton Black Knights. With the Hillers defense, I send it to my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklass. Good afternoon, Tom. 
today's defense for Hopkinton is Ronnie Sheamus at third, Ben McKenzie at short, Cole Glassburn at second base, Brendan Kelly at first, left to right, Drew Rancatori, Tommy Ambrosoni in center, Connor Kelly in right, Stevie Simos behind the plate. Josh Fisher today. Tom? All right, thank you very much, Larry, and we are ready to play some baseball here at Stoughton High School. As George Currier, the second baseman, steps in to face Josh Fisher. And Larry, I understand that you've seen Josh throw a couple times this season. What are your thoughts on his performance this year? Kids really impressed me. I'll just say that right off the top. His last game against Medfield threw a shutout. Um, Fastball, late life on it. And the first pitch there is in for a strike, 0 and 1. Does have a breaking pitch. The knock on him as a, a youth player and as he fall in the dirt. Uh, as he matured was, he was erratic to be honest. This year he's come right out of the chute, throwing strikes, keeping the ball around the plate and uh, he doesn't seem to get rattled. Well, the Stoughton Black Knights certainly lucked out in this game as they end up as getting the home field advantage. Of course, the Hillers are the home team here today because they are the higher seed, but Stoughton was one of the neutral sites. No, not true. <laughs> At least that's uh, what the MIAA said. <laughs> Stoughton <laughs> ends up on their home turf here today. Certainly a bit of an advantage for Stoughton, but in any case, I think the Hillers are ready to go here today. They As are, Fisher but delivers, hit in the air, foul out of play. Count remains two and two. The uh, Hillers managers all year, they've done lots of things for the uh, kids. John Yusuf and Gabe Lopez, I should recognize them for all their hard work. It is a beautiful sunny day. Temperatures at about 75. A pitch just outside that'll fill up the count on Courier. I'll get you the exact temperature in a moment. George Courier hit, hit a 317 during the regular season for Stoughton. Swing and a miss, out number one. That'll bring up Jacob Kaplan, the right fielder. The two hitters to look out for on Stoughton is Robbie Seaman, who hit a 365, and George Currier, who hit a 317. Larry, how about that weather report? I'll get it to you. Just relax, relax, calm right. down. I'm trying to <laughs> dial into the weather, weather center. <laughs> Fisher deals. Swing and a miss. 0 oh and 1. Next thing I know, you're going to ask for a traffic report. That's it's right. We want it all here. To get home. <laughs> Full of questions today, Tom. As long as we made it here on time. That's right. Leg lift and the pitch, strike two. There's that little sneaky breaking pitch. He's been training for years and years and years at winning pitchers in Framingham. Fisher deals. Strike three, got him looking. See you later, take a seat. That's strikeout number two for Fisher. 75 degrees and sunny, you are correct. Told you. <laughs> Get that weather vane on top of your hat. Josh Fisher, a sophomore for the Hillers. Certainly a promising young arm for Coach Samos' team. Swing and a miss by Robert Seaman, the shortstop. Coach Samos calls the pitches, relays them to his son Stevie, who's the Tri Valley MVP, her second consecutive year. Line up and the pitch, just high. One and one. If the Hillers win here today, they advance on to the sectional finals. We'll fill you in on the bracket in just a moment. And there's a pitch just low, two and one. So right now, Westwood is taking on Oliver Ames over at Quincy. The winner of that game will play the winner of this game in the South Division II sectional finals. And that is fouled away. 
to and two. We've gone this far before, you may recall, a couple of years ago in 2017. That's right. We were in Rockland facing Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational High. Came out on the short end of that one. I think it was 3-2. Wide up and the pitch. Just inside. Full count. Thought about going. Checked. Two outs in the inning. Bases are clear. Three and two count. Hit in the air. Left side and Sheamus got it for the third and final out of the top of the first. To the bottom of the inning we go. You are tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Playoff Baseball on HCAM. We are ready for the bottom of the first inning. Let's take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers lineup. Leading things off is shortstop Ben McKenzie, the catcher Steve Simos will bat second. Hitting third is center fielder Tommy Ambersoni. Batting cleanup is left fielder Drew Rancatori. Hitting fifth, third baseman Ronnie Sheamus. Batting sixth, right fielder Connor Kelly. Hitting seventh, first baseman Brendan Kelly. Alex Barker Hook, the DH, hitting eighth. Cole Glassburn, the second baseman, hitting ninth. Larry, how about that Stoughton defense? Uh, the Stoughton defense, the Stoughton defense. Brady Conlon at third base, Robert Seaman. At shortstop, George Courier at second base. First baseman, James Ganest, the third. Kyle Gagney in left. Cian Swarzewski in center. How's that? Uh, Jake Kaplan in right. Michael Nazaro behind the plate, catching Evan Jackman. First pitch to McKenzie is a ball inside, 1 and 0. Oh. There's a strike, one and one. Ben McKenzie's had a good season at the plate. They're giving him the line today, Tom. Hit a 425 during the season. Inside, two and one. They're really giving him the line. I don't know whether they've been watching our broadcast or not, but plenty of left field line for Ben McKenzie. Three and one. Good thing we're not going live here. Don't have to worry about a second, seven second delay. <laughs> There's a strike, three and two. We'll count on McKenzie. Well, the evil eye from you. I'm about to say something. That you will have to worry about. Fouled away. Good crowd on hand here today for yes. this sectional semifinal matchup. And this is hit high in the air, left side, and it is caught by the third baseman, Brady Conlon, who had to battle the sun a little bit. One away. See former coach Keith Vera in the stands. Former head coach Mark Stickney in the stands. Everybody who's anybody from Hopkins is here today. Catcher Steve Simo steps in. This is hit in the air, foul territory. That's going to be trouble. And actually, it's fair territory, and Michael Nazaro makes the catch. Well, the, some of the players out there are going to have to battle the sun. So are we, Larry. Yeah. Thanks for the sunblock, by the way. Very courteous. I'll send you the charges later. All right. Tommy Ambersoni will step in, the center fielder. Two outs in the inning for the Hillers. Breaking pitch in there for a strike, 0-1. Oh Both teams might be a little tight. They're in the uh, sectional semis. Strike two. Line up and the pitch. Hit in the air over to center field and it's caught by Swarzewski for the third and final out of the first inning. We'll head to the top of the second on HCAM. Top of the second inning. Coming up for Stoughton is four, five, and six. James Ganes the third, Michael Nazaro, and Kian Swarzewski. As Josh Fisher is set to deal.
Fisher had two strikeouts in the top half of the first. First pitch of the second is down low. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Joe Frackleton on camera for Hopkinton Hiller's playoff baseball. Line up and the pitch. Hit in the air over to center field, shallow center field, and it's caught by Ben McKenzie. One away. He had good backup with Tammy Ember, Tommy Embersoni, not Tammy Embersoni. I don't want to butcher his first name. But one of the benefits of playing at your home field, you know where all the gopher holes are, certainly, and you know that mound. And for pitchers, knowing your mound is very, very important. Michael Nazaro, the catcher, will step in. Yeah, certainly a big advantage for Stoughton. But it does tend to happen here in these playoff games. Pillars did benefit during the volleyball season. And Stoughton had to go on a road on the road during the uh, volleyball season as a lower seed. <laughs> it's supposed to be neutral site, but what are you gonna do? Hit in the left field, that'll get down for a single. Who was that, Thurston Howell the third, or who was that? Nazaro reaches, one on, one out. Kian Swarzewski, the center fielder, will step in. So Stoughton draws first blood. Fisher working from the stretch. Got some fans up around 5,000 feet. That pitch down low. Yep, some airplanes going by. Very quiet though. They have good mufflers on those things. Small lead. Josh has got a good pickoff move. He'll check in and he picked him off. Throw to second. And now the throw back to first. And they got the tag. I just got uh, done saying he's got a good pickoff move over there. And what happened? There you go. Nazaro picked off a great throw by Fisher. Over to Kelly, who threw to Glassburn. And back to Kelly it went for the tag. Well, oh. That's erased. Everybody on the bases has been erased. Two down. Kian Swarzewski, the center fielder, steps in. Sure, sure. And this is up the left side, bobbled by Sheamus, and he won't be able to get a throw off. He's not happy with himself over there. Well, that was a tough play to make, took an awkward hop. I'm going to score that a single. Kyle Gagnon, the left fielder, will step in. See if that ball was hit on turf, that would have had a true True bounce, Tom. Just FYI on that. Line up in the pitch. Or actually, he's going to pick him off again. Throw to second. McKenzie is going to go back to Kelly. The tag got him. Two pickoffs here in the second inning. And that'll wrap up the top of the second. What a move by Josh Fisher picking off two runners in the inning. We are scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second on HCAM. Bottom of the second inning coming up for the Hillers, four, five, and six. Drew Rankatori, Ronnie Sheamus, and Connor Kelly. Well, certainly uh, some interesting happenings in the top half of the second. Two pickoffs by Josh Fisher. What a move he has, Larry. Yep, uh, I predicted one of them but I would think that uh, once burnt, twice shy might come into play. But I thought the second one was pretty close to a balk as he balked his last time out. So Rankatori gets a piece of this one over to right field. That'll get in there for a base hit. A lead off single for Rankatori. So in a previous game, Josh Fisher got called for a balk. He wasn't too happy about it. Let the umpire know. The umpire had a little conversation with him and he didn't say a word the rest of the game. Ronnie Sheamus, the third baseman, steps in. One on, no outs for the Hillers. Foul up the left side. Sheamus had a couple of hits the game against 
the uh, monsters from Milton. What's their nickname? Are they the Wildcats or something? You got it. Okay. Down low. You know, things are uh, serious when you get three umpires to do a game. Yeah, that's typically what happens in these later playoff rounds. Pitch up high. Two and one. So Josh Fisher did show off his composure there. He had a base runner, had another base runner, and erased both of them. Pitch to Sheamus. Breaking pitch that didn't break quite enough. Three and one. Sheamus a sophomore, a sophomore. Runner on, no outs. Make that two runners on with no outs. Connor Kelly will step on, or step in with two on. He's a good looking sophomore. Looks like the outfielders playing them. Him right, he's a pull hitter. Rarely goes the other way. He had a pretty good game against Milton. He did. Closed it out and got a couple hits. Fooled you, didn't he? he you thought it was a foul ball when it was a gap right at right center field. <laughs> that is true. He was on second base on a foul ball. Took my eyes away <laughs> for one second. I distracted you, that was my You, my you did. You got Robbie Pagliuca coaching first base and Brent McKenzie. Ben's dad's been doing a great job down at third base all year. We do have some stats on the Stoughton starter today. Evan Jackman will get you in just a moment. Oh, you didn't share them with me. Wind up in the pitch. That is up the left side foul. Look out, fans. 0-2. Yeah. They've got a fairly good contingent down there at third base. Well, they are at their home field, so you'd think that would be kind of so. Evan Jackman, a senior, went five and one on the season. Pitched 32 and a third, a 260 ERA. Stoughton has four pitchers they can rely on. As this is up the middle, flipped to second for one throw to first is low, and it's going to be dropped. Good hustle, good hustle, Connor Kelly. So it'll be runners on the corners with one out. Well, the Admiral tried to flip it over to Courier, but couldn't finish off the double play, you know. I call him the Admiral, right? So Kelly reaches on the force out. Now Brendan Kelly will step in. <laughs> Seaman, Admiral, Navy. Ah, get I it? see. I get it. See, every, every game is always something new. That one just flew past <laughs> my head, Larry. What can I say? Is Line up in the pitch. Down low. You remember the young Eggers kid last year? The family owned the restaurant? Ham and Eggers? <laughs> I got you with that one. Brendan Kelly had a home run last time against Milton. Check swing. And did he go? Or he got hit, maybe in oh, the box. Oh, he got hit? Or he's or getting told not. to come back. Okay. He had a big fly. They did uh, rule that was a strike according to the scoreboard. Uh, they're sending Connor Kelly back. Okay. Not quite sure what happened there. Well, maybe it... Maybe he didn't move in the box, I don't know. You've got the benefit of replay. Scoreboard says one and one. The umpire also agrees. Jackman from the stretch. Checking at third, runner back safe. You'll rarely see that in high school ball. Pick off throw to third. That's obviously something they've worked on. Jackman pitching out of the stretch. There's a nice breaking pitch for strike two. Runner takes off from first, and he's safe at second. Kelly with the steal. A delayed steal at that. Caught them. Caught them napping a bit. Now Stoughton finds himself with Brendan Kelly at the plate. Two runs in scoring position. Draw first blood, Hopkinton. Statistically, you're going to do well. One and two count. One out in the inning, two on. Fouled off the catcher. Count remains one and two. That shot he hit against Milton was a monstrous bomb. 
certainly was. It might have been the furthest home run to that part of the turf ballpark we saw all season. And it didn't bounce over, it cleared the fence. Line up and the pitch. Up high. Good two take. And two. Good take. Stoughton playing their infield in, so anything on the ground, they're going to bring it to the plate. Seaman's the only one that uh, doesn't seem to be on the lip of the grass, unless he's going to creep in. Both runners with a slight lead. Jackman deals. Upstairs, full count. That was a really tough pitch to lay off. Alex Coming in so slow, looping pitch. Alex Barker hooked the DH on deck. Upstairs, and that's a walk. Bases loaded for the Hillers. That was a good job by Nazaro behind the plate to keep that one uh, within reach. Yeah, to climb the ladder a little bit. And Alex Barker hook has got the bases juice with one out. So Jackman had a conversation with Seaman. I don't know whether they've got a. Uh... And this is in foul territory and caught by the first baseman two way. That'll bring up Cole Glasper in the second baseman. James Ganesh the third caught that one. So they may have a play for an inside move by Jackson or Jackman with Seaman. That's why he might not have been playing in when all the rest of his compadres were playing on the grass. Wind up in the pitch. And this is up the middle, gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, and they'll get the out, four to three, for out number three. And despite loading up the bases, the game remains scoreless as we head to the top of the third on HCAM. Top of the third inning. Seven, eight, and nine do up for Stoughton. We are scoreless. Hillers loaded up the bases last inning with one out, but could not play to run. Wind up and the pitch down low. Stoughton's had a couple of base runners, but unfortunately they were both picked off back to back. That's right. So Fishers faced the minimum. That pitch just high. Not a cloud in the sky here today. Oh, I see one over there. It's a nice All right, Larry, strike. a few clouds. Yeah. Two and one is the count. Wisp, wispy clouds. Very few. Yeah, well, don't say there's no clouds. Fool the audience in. Wind up in the pitch. Fouled away, two and two. Fisher's being aggressive with the hitters. I'd like to see that. He's showing a lot of poise for a sophomore in this semifinal matchup. Never been in this type of pressure situation before. That's fought off foul. Oh. You don't want to hit the ball near her. Coach's wife. Time called by the hitter. Uh, Steve will have to talk to her a little bit about that being late to the game. You know what I mean? Hello, Mrs. Simos. <laughs> Wind up in the pitch. Down low, full count. Her son, Timmy, is here. Starting second baseman for Army, the Black Knights. Fielding percentage of 982, one of the best fielding percentages in the country. And this is up the middle, and that is going to trickle into left center and roll all the way to the fence. Picked up the throw in, and it's going to be a double to start things off for Stoughton. Kyle Gagnon with the big hit. Noah Johnson, the DH, will step in next. Well, it's certainly a difficult fence to play out there, and over in right field, there isn't really a fence, so. Well, nobody's gonna hit it over that fence. It's very far away. <laughs> Tommy Ambersoni made a good throw in 
Ball was up against the fence. Kept the runner from going to third base. I thought he'd have three bases for sure as it left the bat. Fisher working from the stretch. Runner on second, no outs. And this is going to be into center field. And the lead runner held up at third. The throw home is going to sail towards the backstop, but a nice job by Fisher, who is playing towards the backstop, is able to catch it and keep the runner at third. A long single for Noah Johnson. Gagnon up to third. Brady Conlon to the plate. He was in perfect position to back up the catcher. Couldn't have done it any better than that. It's where he was supposed to be. That's where he was. The ball was overthrown over Stevie Simos' head and right into Josh Fisher's glove. And their hitter was unable to advance. Hitter should have read the ball better, but he didn't. Stoughton bench starting to get a bit loud with runners on the corners and no outs. He went. I thought Appeal he it. Oh, come on. I'm One and O. Oh. I guess you just held up. I disagree. Fisher deals. Fouled away. One and one. He's got a nice, easy delivery, does Fisher. There's nothing herky-jerky about it. Very fluid delivery. Sneaky fast. Swing and a miss, one and two. We saw Charlie Kuhn last year against Duckberry. He kind of leg lifted to his chest. But Josh doesn't throw that way. Down low. Two and two. Josh can get out of this with just giving up one run. He'll be good. There's strike three, got him looking. Ooh. He was admiring that pitch, like he was at the museum. Now he's got to sit down. Third strikeout of the game for Fisher, and now George Currier, the second baseman, will step in. There's an empty seat for that young man. A cut looking by Josh Fisher, off-speed pitch. Fisher trying to work out of this jam. Runners on the corners, one out. Swing and a miss. Didn't get cheated with that rip. Not sure I like his eye black there. It's not Halloween, it's baseball. <laughs> I mean, look at it. No point to it. It's supposed to block out the sun off your cheekbones. The 0-1. He went. There's a bunt for a strike, and the runner from third is going to be tagged out two away. What Johnson advances player. to second. Gagnon tagged out as he was on his way home, thinking that the bunt was going to land, but it did not. There's a suicide squeeze put on by Stoughton, but that's some base wanting boners from Stoughton so far. Two pickoffs and then getting caught in a rundown on a bunt that was not made. Missed it totally. Made the attempt. Stevie Simos ran the runner back to third. Runner was tagged out. The 0-2. Just inside, one and two. That's a big momentum killer. Certainly is. Sucked the life out of the crowd. There's still a runner in scoring position, however, for Stoughton. That's true. But two pickoffs and a missed suicide squeeze. And there's strike three. At least he swung at it, but he's still in the same place. Strike three. He had him fooled there, and we will head to the bottom of the third. We are scoreless on HCAM.
Bottom of the third inning, still scoreless here at Stoughton High School. Coming up for the Hillers, top of the order, Ben McKenzie, Steve Simos, Tommy Ambersoni. I smell a breakthrough inning right here. I smell it. You could ah. be right. Stoughton attempted a suicide squeeze last inning, and it did not pan out for them. It, it ended up as a suicide. <laughs> a little chin music there, one and oh. And the uh, final hitter of that inning went down swinging. Got some warm-up activity in the Hiller bullpen. Cole Glassburn, he's going to stay loose. He's hitting a nine hole today, so he'll be ready on a moment's notice because there is no tomorrow. The 2-0 fouled away. Nice to see Hopkinton softball alumni. Captain from last year, Emma Murphy, down here. We're softball in action tomorrow as this is driven into left field. That'll get down for a hit. All the way to the fence it goes. Here comes McKenzie over to second base. That's where he will stop, but it's a leadoff double for the Hillers here in the bottom of the third. Did I tell you in the first inning that the left fielder was playing too far off the line? And where'd he hit it? Get it down the line. Come on, fellas. You gotta listen to me out there, Stoke. <laughs> so yeah. Emma Murphy spent her first year of college up at Endicott overlooking the water. Hung up her softball cleats. I was encouraging her to go off of the softball team, which she would have made it easily. But no. Had some fun up there. The teacher's assistant. Pitch to Simos up high. Simos flew out to shallow center field and has only played appearance in this game. So with the fact he batted over a 500 this season, I'd say he's overdue for a hit, Larry. Yeah, he swung at the first pitch his last time up, and uh, I'm sure his dad was not too happy. And he does what he normally does during an at-bat. His mental clock goes off, and he calls time. I think that's a head game with the pitcher, personally. Or he'll get hit by a pitch. The 1-0. Strike one. I wouldn't put him past him. Last year he was the, well, probably the leader in the country with 14 hit by pitches. The 1-1. And he gets a piece of this one over to right center. And it is going to be caught by the center fielder. McKenzie tags up, heading over to third, and he will get there easily. Got a walk down there. But a lot of other uh, ballparks. That might have been pretty close to the fence, but of course, if this the only were fence hopping, here if this is were hopping very in. deep. That, that might have been out. If that might have been out. He, yeah. That was a long but distance. We're not, in, we're not in Hopkinton, though. That's right, we're not. We're in Stoughton. A foolish reason why we're here. I don't know. <laughs> First seeded Hillers playing against fifth seeded Stoughton in Stoughton. And Ambersoni gets a piece of this one over to right field. And it is caught. McKenzie going to tag. And now he's going to hold up. It was a great throw in. Throw to third. Is he back safe? Yes, I believe he is. It was really kind of no call there by the umpire, but he's safe. So Ambersoni flies out to right, hoping to drive McKenzie in. It does not pan out. And here is Rankatori. Ben tried to draw an errant throw from the right fielder. Got halfway up the line. Swing and a miss by Rankatori. And he was very close to being tagged out at third, I'll yeah. tell you. Close as what? Uh, only counts in hand grenades and horseshoes? <laughs> Swing and a miss, 0 oh and 2. And just like Fisher getting out of the inning last time, leaving a runner stranded will give uh, Stoughton some confidence. Rankatori has a single today. Gets a piece of this one over to center field, and it's caught. That'll be the third and final out of the bottom of the third to the top of the fourth we go. We are scoreless on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. 
Top of the fourth inning, due up for Stoughton is two, three, and four. Jacob Kaplan, Robert Seaman, and James Ganes the third. A right fielder, shortstop, and first baseman. Well, it's been all about pitching and defense here today, and of course, base running. Stoughton's had a couple of base running mistakes that have cost them. Just talking to Alex Reynolds, the uh, 2017 Tri-Valley MVP, about what his thought was about sending Ben McKenzie home. He says, nah, he read that pretty well. First pitch is a strike to Kaplan. I think he quick pitched him right there. He said he read, he read the throw pretty good and he put the brakes on. He would have been dead, he says. I'll take his word for it. Line up and the pitch. Strike two. Kaplan struck out in his only plate appearance in this game. That pitch down low. Josh Fisher is a uh, Kaplan piled trying up to some argue K's here. that the pitch hit his foot, but the umpire wasn't buying it. Oh no, he wasn't buying what he was selling. How many K's does Josh have? Four K's? Something like that. All right. It is four. Four Ks is correct. There's five. And the ball <laughs> briefly got away, but not enough. For, and Simo like laid the cat, tag on like him. Like a cat, he jumped out and <laughs> put that ball in his butt. Didn't bother throwing down to first base. He said, uh-uh, you're not going to run yeah, this You scored one that K2 unassisted. Robert, right? That's right. Robert Seaman, the shortstop, steps in. Ah, here he is. Fifth strikeout of the game. Aye, aye. Fisher. <laughs> Upstairs. <laughs> hey, you remember Bill Campbell? He used to be a Red Sox reliever. You know what his nickname was? Captain. Soup. <laughs> what are you laughing at? That's true. Anybody in the audience that's over 50 years old will know that that was his nickname. One and one. <laughs> oh, that's not our demographic. Everybody who watches is under 50. Bounce that one up to the plate. Two and one count to Seaman. Flew out in his only plate appearance. If I get some Wi-Fi, I'm going to have to prove that little fact to you. I believe you. Okay. Fisher with a long look in, set to deliver. Upstairs. Just overthrew that one a little bit. Three and one. Bases clear, one out here in the top of the fourth. Josh has been pretty economical with his pitches. There's a strike, full count. Strike, oh. And that it's close. a walk, says the home plate umpire. Certainly very close there. I jumped the gun. William Richard Campbell. That's what his name was. James Ganes III will step in, the first baseman. Lined out to shortstop in his only plate appearance. One out, one on for Stoughton. <laughs> Hit in the air over to right field. A long way, and a long way goes Connor Kelly to make the catch. Well, I guess that's one benefit of having a very deep fence out there. Connor Kelly able to cover a whole lot of ground to make that catch. Two away. He's got extra long arms, that Connor Kelly kid. He just got that one, the end of his glove. Michael Nazaro, the catcher, will step in. The runner on base. Robert Seaman stays at first. I mean, that wall, uh, the fence has got to be... <laughs> I don't know, 500 feet up there or something. Yeah, he got a, he got a, all of it, I'll tell you. But he got that ball in. The runner knows his field and didn't try and tag. Pick. Throw over. Almost picked him off again, but this time Siemens called safe. 
All right, the first base coach is talking to the umpire. He says, is that a balk? And uh, the umpire is saying, no, I'm looking for it. He just has a great move. Is he going to do it again? Yes, he will. Almost got him. Oh, Josh wanted that one bad. Tag. He took two steps towards the dugout. <laughs> Kelly with a polite apology for the tag in the face there. That's all right. It's all fair in love and war here. But Josh Fish has been known to pick three times in a row. I've seen him do that. I've actually seen him do that. This time he'll pitch, and it's a strike. Oh, and one. You know, you don't really want to run against Stevie Simons from a catcher, you know, situation. And you definitely don't want to stray. And that pickoff is going to get away. The runner is going to advance to second. It'll be a free pass. Yeah, that's the problem of picking over too many times. Bad things can happen. So it's a runner in scoring position. There is two outs in the inning. One pick too many. And the umpire just putting first base back in place. Well, Brendan's pretty tall, but he's, his arms aren't that long. The 0 1. Runner with a slight lead off of second. Upstairs. Stoughton bench starting to ride Josh Fisher. Getting a little animated in there. Upstairs, two and one. Simos able to keep it in front of him to keep that runner. At second base. I'm glad you're keeping the clicker. I totally lost track of that count. Seaman with a slight lead at second base. Stoughton bench making some noise. Two outs in the inning. Well, it looks like the whole student body is out today. That's what happens when you're playing at a home field when um, you're a lower seed. Get a crowd advantage. Swing and a miss, two and two. Best thing Josh Fisher can do right now is quiet that crowd down. Put this guy on the bench. Five strikeouts so far for Fisher. Hit in the air, over to right field. Kelly battling the sun, makes the catch, no problem. Yeah, that'll shut him up, that'll shut him up. And that is the third and final out of the top of the fourth to the bottom of the inning we go. We are scoreless on HCAM. Bottom of the fourth inning at the halfway point of this one. The Hopkinton Hillers, the first seed against Stoughton, the fifth seed here at Stoughton High School, the neutral site. Yeah, the neutral site, they got the 400 fans to 100. You you <laughs> tell the audience what happened in between innings. Ronnie Sheamus, the third baseman, will step in. If you don't, I will. It's pretty explanatory. Well, the camera wasn't on. What did their athletic director say? That's right. Oh, well, the athletic director, well, what did he say? Just what did he fans say? fans not to cheer for their... In chicken. other words, cheer stop ri team. riding the pitcher. Support your team. Is a hit by pitch. Support your team. Don't ride the other team. That's Show right. some good sportsmanship. But, you know, that's sort of an inevitability. I could have seen that happen. Not ju I'm just saying. Connor Kelly, the right fielder, will step in. Runner on first. No outs. That's so why they have things called neutral sites. Yeah, the definition of a neutral site is a site that favors <laughs> neither team. Right. In case you were wondering. Yeah, you know, nobody knows the field. It's idiosyncrasies. 
Checking at first, runner back safe. Pretty decent move from the right-hander, yeah, Jackman. That was a good move there. Shamer's pretty quick with his feet. Not twinkle toes by any stretch, but he's pretty quick. 1-0, up high. Connor's known for hitting line drives. He's not a high fly ball kid. Gets a piece of this one over to center field. It goes, could be trouble. That'll drop in for a hit. Sheamus heading over to third. The throw in is cut off. Sheamus held up at third. Kelly heads over to second. It's going to be a double for the right fielder. How do you like them apples? Two in scoring position, no outs. Brandon Kelly will step to the plate. Ooh. Big Paul Bunyan step into the plate. That was a good piece of hitting there by Connor nice Kelly. Nice line shot over the center fielder's head. And we're going to have a conference on the mound here. A meeting, a meeting on the mound. The head coach for Stoughton going to talk to his pitcher. Stoughton led by head coach Mike Armour. It's awful quiet over on the Stoughton side. You can hear a pin drop. Brennan Kelly walked in his only plate appearance and has a big opportunity here to put the Hillers on top in the bottom of the fourth. Last few games, he's lost a couple of balls. I mean, lose it. I mean, hit some tremendous, prodigious shots. Certainly has the power, that's for sure. Hit a 364 during the season. He had one against Medfield, I think, over the right field fence, and then just the other day off Milton. Line up in the pitch. Down low, one and oh. He does present a big target. There's nothing compact about this kid. He's 6'2", 220 pounds, heading to Stonehill. Ah, That's watch it, Tom. Away. One and a one. Grass cutter. <laughs> It's all right. First base coach should have had it, but. Now, if you're Stoughton, you think about walking Brennan Kelly here. Well, with an open base, you might. They're not going to. They're going to pitch to him. That's fouled away. One and two. Check. All right, he's got to be aware of that breaking pitch from Jackman. He's up in the count now. Huh. Change the balls and strikes are put up when Hopkinton's up, but not when Stoughton. Down low. In nice the dirt. Save yeah. there by Nazaro. The infield's playing in all the way around, except for Seaman. And that, I think, is because uh, Jackman and Seaman may have a uh, trick pay up their sleeve. And this is going to be a fair ball up the left side. The throw to first is in time, but the Hillers will score a run. A sacrifice, RBI ground out for Brandon Kelly. Ronnie Sheamus coming around to score. Up to third is Connor Kelly. That was a sacrifice, RBI, six to three ground out. And Alex Barker Hook, the DH, will step in. Like to see him be nice and patient. He's hitting a little lower in the batting order, but don't let Jackman off the hook. Work the count. Make him make a mistake. Infield is in for Stoughton all the way around. Down low there. Either definitely a play was on because now you look at Seaman at shortstop, he's in on the grass. Previously he was on the dirt. Down low, two and oh. Hunter Kelly's got pretty good speed. The ball gets behind the Navarro or Nazaro, one of those two, it's all, all the same thing. He'll dash home. And that hits him. Ooh, Parker not dashing Hook's anywhere. taking a clunker for the team there. I'll bring up Cole Glassburn. You don't hear anything out of the Hopkins dugout. Ooh, he's gonna shake like, that one off. Wear it. Shook it up, it look, looks like it got him right in the arm. The athletic trainer is here. She's eyeballing the situation. So I think the trainer might come out and check on him. A little shooken up. That was a pretty hard pitch, too, to take in the arm. But he's all right. He's going to wow. stay in. And <laughs> is he or isn't he? Seems like he is. And the athletic trainer looking on closely. 
So it'll be runners on first and third, one out, a run already in for the Hillers. Pinch runner, we're gonna get Bobby McGuire in for uh, Alex Barker Hook. So will Barker Hook return? He could, but for now, there'll be a pinch runner. He just told the AT that it hit him on the funny bone. And that doesn't hurt. There's <laughs> nothing funny about getting hit on your Alecranon. How do you like that for a word, wow. Alecranon? You know your anatomy, huh? I know, I broke mine. <laughs> Skateboarding. Oh, really? I was really? 52 years old, yeah. Broke every, everybody in town knows the I story. I would have never pictured you as a skateboarder. I, that was the problem. They called me Tony Hawk for the rest of the summer. <laughs> <laughs> broke the humerus, the ulnar, the radial head, everything. Lefty takes ball one. Cole Glassburn will be uh, calling a few of his games this summer. He'll be with the Ashland Legion baseball team. Yeah, before he heads down to D.C. for his studies. Checking at first, runner back safe. That was a smart move by Jackman, trying to catch McGuire leaning a little bit. You don't want to give him a free out here. Fouled away. One and one. Cole went after the first pitch last time up. Popped up. He's just patient. These Hiller hitters are just patient with Jackman. They can run him from the game. Wind up in the pitch. And this is up the right side and bobbled by the second baseman. Picks it up, throws the first, gets the out at first, but a run scores. Connor Kelly comes around to make it a two to nothing game. A sacrifice RBI ground out for Cole Glassburn. The Cardinal, Cole Glassburn. That's what he's gonna be next year, a Cardinal. Bobby Catholic McGuire. University. Yeah. Bobby McGuire up to second, Ben McKenzie to the plate. Just made contact, did what he had to do. Second baseman made a little bobble and it was all, all they needed. Played a run. Two runs scored, two outs, runner on second for the Hillers here in this bottom of the fourth inning. It looks like the left fielder learned his lesson from last time. He's moved over towards the line. Wind up and the pitch. Very inside, was one that behind him? <laughs> it was it? I don't know. I can tell if it was just in front of him or right behind him. Well. You wonder if uh, Jackman's going to start to have some control issues here. He's a very smart kid, this Ben McKenzie. He's going to Bowdoin. So him and Stevie Simons. Got to be really smart to get in that school. And he gets a big piece of this one over towards the left field fence. It's sailing, and it is caught right Ooh. in front of the fence oh. for the third and final out of the inning, but not before the Hillers plate two runs. It is a two to nothing Hillers lead as we head to the top of the fifth on H cam. Top of the fifth inning, a two to nothing lead for the Hillers as they play two runs in the bottom of the fourth. Six, seven, and eight do up for Stoughton. Liam Swarzeski, Kyle Gagnon, and Noah Johnson do up. Swarzeski and uh, Zach Sasitsky should uh, get together. <laughs> Josh. Who makes the reservation? Right. Josh Fisher remains in the game. He's pitched well so far. Yes, And there's did. a strike. That they should have pointed over to me strike. for the appeal. I would have given him the right hand. He went. No Unusual batting that. stance with uh, Swarzeski, though. Look at it. Yeah, no doubt about that one. It's it's a little pigeon toed up there. I mean, um, it's not a criticism, it's just the way he hits. Wind up in the pitch. Strike two. Nice pitch there by Fisher. He got the un, he got the du. Let's see if he gets the toi. Let's be French. Thanks for clarifying. All right. Ball one. One and two. Awful close pitch to take. Two and two. Tempted, tempted. Yeah. 
Fisher set to deliver. And this is a rope in the left field. That'll drop down for a hit. A single for Kian Swarzeski, and now Kyle Gagnon will step in. He hasn't had much difficulty, Swarzeski, uh, so far against Josh Fisher. Lefty lefty matchup. Well, for the Hillers in the bottom of the fourth, Ronnie Sheamus started off getting hit by a pitch. Connor Kelly then hit a double. And then it was a sacrifice RBI ground out by Brendan Kelly to score Sheamus. And then another hit batter, followed up by a sacrifice RBI ground out by Cole Glasper to score Kelly. And those were the two Hiller runs. There's a strike. I don't think Swarzewski's going to be venturing too far off first base. He's a pickoff candidate. Wind up and the pitch. Very, very close. It looks like the umpire Land makes one. a little bit of a grunt, which confuses me whether it's going to be a ball or a strike. I've been confused before. One one by Fisher. Two and one. I bet you say Josh Fisher's thrown about fifty pitches so far. He raced a couple of hitters without having to face batters with his pickoffs. And there is strike two. Two and two. Fisher deals, fouled away. In his last outing, whether it was Medfield or Norwood, Josh Fisher, I spoke to the home plate and base umpires after the game. They were parked next to me. I didn't, wasn't trying to get any inside scoop. I asked them how his fastball was. They said he had a lot of life. Just Swing and a miss. Yeah. Get down. There's out number one, and that'll bring up Noah Johnson, the DH. And that his curveball was better than average. And I said, well, you know, he's, he's doing really well this year. Hey, what's he, a junior? I said, no, sophomore. And their mouths simultaneously dropped. That kid's a sophomore? Is he's going to be really good. Certainly is. And this is hit in the air over towards right center. Ambersoni tracks it down for out number two. Jackie, Bradley, Ambersoni. Everything that goes up in the air, anywhere close to him, he's going to snag it. I'll bring up Brady Conlon, the third baseman. So these two umpires, they've seen some really, really good left-handers. One Henry Weicker out of Wellesley. He's heading to Va Tech, Virginia Tech, where Ryan Kester is heading this year. Throws about 93 miles an hour. Line up, checking at first, runner back safe. That wasn't close to being a box, so there's no squawk from the first base coach. He has two down, top five. Keep remembering that it's a top. Runner with a slight lead off of first, back he goes. Fisher really likes to keep those runners at bay. Yeah, I, I think uh, two is enough, two outs. Kid definitely doesn't want to get picked for a third. Check in, runner back. I disagree with that call three in a row. He doesn't even have a huge lead. And the runner is pretty tight to the bag. Yeah, well. I mean, only bad stuff can happen. Work on the hitter. Stevie will throw him out. Breaking pitch down low. One and O oh on Conlon. Runner on, two outs. Hitler is leading two to nothing here in the top of the fifth. There's a strike. That's it, work the hitter. And you know, some catchers really love to back pick runners on first base and they fall in love with it. And sometimes they air mail balls into the, in the area of right field or out of play. Swing and a miss. Ooh, do you feel that breeze, Tom? It's Certainly a little hot did. out here. Got, ooh. One and two. Like free air conditioning, that swing. Certainly was. 
was. Or he had a hole in his bat, one or the other. Down low, two and two. Beautiful day, Tom, beautiful day. It certainly is. Be even more beautiful little, if Popkin uh, gets a win. Wind up in the pitch from Fisher upstairs, full count now. Miller is fighting for a chance to advance to the Division II South sectional finals. That's the winner of Westwood and Oliver Ames. I secretly hope uh, Westwood. And this is hit in the air, foul territory, and it is caught! Went off of Brendan Kelly, and Josh Fisher is able to make the catch. Score that what? Kelly with the assist, Fisher with the out. Three to one. <laughs> that oh. is out number three, a three to one fly out. <laughs> Unbelievable. Things are going right, things are going right. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth. The Hillers leading Stoughton two to nothing on H Cam. Bottom of the fifth inning, Steve Simos coming up to the plate. Evan Jackman remains in the game for Stoughton. A two to nothing lead for the Hillers. He's wiggled out of some trouble, Jackman has. Outside, one and oh. So I like to see a little patience. Stevie swung at the first pitch in his first plate appearance. Didn't give himself much of a chance. He's an aggressive hitter. Two and oh. Simos has flown out and sacrificed so far today. Stevie had that three run bases clearing triple against Milton. The strike. And that was uh, probably the furthest hit that I saw that didn't go out of the ballpark. 2 1. Upstairs, 3 and 1. Josh Fisher behind the dugout, staying cool. Well, it's hot Wednesday afternoon. And there's a walk. He's a threat to steal. So who do you like tonight, the Bruins game? Now, remember, this is, the game will be over by the time people watch this. Uh, I gotta so go. make, your, make your call right here and now. I got to go Bruins. Got a score for me? We're You're going to take the ball. We're going to have a pitching change. Who do you like in they the game? They jerked Jackman. Who do you like now? Uh, well, I'm a little afraid to watch, actually. <laughs> I'll take the Bruins. All right. Three to two. All right, the new pitcher is going to be Brady Conlin. He's going to move over from third base. And we'll get you up to date on other defensive changes when we get back after a short break. The Hillers leading Stoughton 2 to nothing here in the bottom of the fifth at Stoughton High School on HCAM. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. New pitcher for Stoughton. Brady Conlin moves over from third base to take over on the mound. Tommy Ambersoni set to step up to the plate. We'll get you updated on the new third baseman momentarily for Stoughton. Well, anybody that's been following Hiller's baseball, Campbell and it's no secret right now, no secret, I'm not giving away any information. I think it's a very good chance Tommy Ambersoni lays down a bunt here and moves Stevie Simons over. Very possible. Cam DeRosa has entered the game for Stoughton as oh, the new yeah. third baseman. And there's a bunt. Here goes Ambersoni. The throw to second. Not in time. Everybody's safe. I'll give you a big round of applause for that. I thought he was bunting for a sacrifice. He bunts for a base hit. Well, the infielders were not playing in on the corners at all, and they just could not catch up to that one in time. And now Drew Rancatori will step in. 
Well, the second baseman rotated over, the first baseman charged. But the ball was sent down to second base and not in time to get the speedy Stevie Simos. Runners on first and second for the Hillers, no outs. In there for a strike. How do you like that for a little alliteration? Speedy Stevie Simos. I like it. Yeah. A little trouble going on for Stoughton. Conlon deals, it's a bunt, and it's foul. We get a pinch hitter here? Is that Cam two. Jarrett? True. Well, yeah, you are correct. Cam Jarrett at the plate for the Hillers, centering the game. For Drew Rankatori. And that's fouled away. Drew was held out of Monday's game against Milton. He's dangerous with the stick. Simon. Jarrett's no slouch. Yep. Dello gets away from the catcher. Both runners are going to advance easily. Simos up to third, Ambersoni up to second. A wild pitch there. Oh, very wild pitch. There are wild pitches and there are wild pitches. That was a very wild pitch. Well, we'll see how Colin. I don't mind. I don't mind. We'll see how Colin does, but with Jackman uh, doing pretty well in this game, I was surprised he got pulled early. And oh. there's another wild pitch. Good cover up by Nazaro. Nazaro's earning his money. Two and two now is the count on Jarrett. Cole Glassburn warming up in the bullpen. Connor Kelly was down there earlier. The closer. Collins set to deal. Called ball. ball. Yeah. You got a loud ball he, call here. Yeah, I know. I was saying that earlier, but uh, it was definitely low. This guy's got a, a really good strike zone. Can't complain about him. There haven't been any... Uh, and this is hit in the air, foul territory out of play. Count remains full. No cars anywhere near here. People down here drive cars? <laughs> they got a beautiful high school, as you can see. Maybe our cameraman can get a shot of that. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air, foul territory. And it is caught. In play. Runners remain at second and third, one away. It'll right. be Ronnie Sheamus, the third baseman. He's walked and been hit by a pitch so far today. Also scored the first run of the game. We well, don't let him off the hook here. I like Ronnie Sheamus in this situation. He's been clutch all year, showing a lot of, a lot of guts for a sophomore. We'll take ball one there. I think we got Connor Kelly on deck, right? Yep. Line up in the pitch. Gets a piece of this one, and that is over to left field. That'll drop in. Here comes Simos, and another runner right behind him. Ambrosoni will score as well. Throw to second. Sheamus is safe. Yeah! Ar a two-RBI single for Sheamus. And he advances to second on the throw in. Get a little excited, get a little excited. He laced that ball down the left field line. It'll bring up Connor Kelly. It's now a four nothing lead for the Hillers. A heads up base running play by Sheamus taken second on the throw. Read that one all the way. Great piece of hitting there by Sheamus. Ambersoni almost caught up to Simos. Yeah, they was running up Stevie's tailpipe, and that's not easy to do. Well, they appealed over to third base that uh, 
Perhaps Tommy Ambrosoni missed third, wheeling around, but that uh, appeal was denied. There's a strike. Uh, the right fielder still in the same spot as he was last time when Connor hit it over his head. Swing and a miss. Amazing what a few base hits and a few runs can do to a boisterous crowd. And this is ripped into right field. That'll get down. Sheamus being waved around third. Here he comes, and he will score. Five-nothing Hillers, an RBI single for Connor Kelly. Brennan Ooh. Kelly will step up to the plate. It's awful quiet around these parts. Except for the Hopkins and Hillers crowd. It's made a good showing here. Former captain, 2017 captain, Brian Gons. Grand, grandfather just showed up. Haven't seen him in years. Brian out in Steubenville, Ohio. Playing soccer, goalie. One and one. Brennan Kelly so far today has walked and hit a sacrifice RBI ground out to score the first run of the game. Down low. Well, Conlon having all sorts of trouble out there on the mound for Stoughton. He doesn't have a chance to warm up, so he came in cold. Still only one out in the inning. And this is hit in the air, over to right field, to the fence, that'll drop in for a hit. Connor Kelly being waved around third here. He comes and he will score to make it a six to nothing game. It's an RBI triple for Brendan Kelly. Didn't even have to slide, oh my, what a bump. That would have definitely, definitely, I'm glad we're playing here in Stoughton, by the way. That would have been, oh. <laughs> Most, oh, just about boy. any other high school field, that would have been out. Right. Alex Barker Hook will step in. He got a hit the last time. Toughed it out. The Hiller is on a rally. Outside, one and oh. Stoughton down to their last six outs. They find themselves down by a half a dozen runs. Infield playing in for Stoughton. Swing and a miss, one and one. I think uh, Alex Barker Hook was trying to lose a ball there with that swing. I don't think they'll have the contact play on on a ground ball hit to the infield with Brendan at third. It's got to get through. One and two. Barker Hook normally plays first base when Brendan Kelly pitches. Casey will come in and relieve. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air. Over to right field, could be trouble. And it is going to drop in between four fielders. Brendan Kelly's gonna tag and he will score. And it's going to be a seven to nothing game. Ooh. And he was just waiting to tag up, but he actually didn't have to as that dropped right between four Stoughton fielders. Well, they all converge, but when you're playing in like that as an infield, trying to go out like that on a pop-up is really difficult. An RBI single for Barker Hook, and now Cole Glassburn will step in. That's a line drive in the book, though. The pitch was inside, one and oh. It's turned into a five-run inning for the Hillers. Now have a seven nothing lead, fouled away. Still only one out for Stoughton. Well, the Stoughton fans uh, are making a whole lot of noise over there. Are they still here? <laughs> <laughs> Pitch outside, two and one. I don't know, where's the exit for those fans? I don't know. Line up and the pitch. Outside. Three and one. 
His ball call is no. Set to deliver. That was inside and the walk is drawn and he tried to back pick but it didn't matter. Yeah, back picked on ball four. So the Stoughton coach is gonna come out and have a conversation with Conlon. So all kinds of trouble here for the Black Knights of Stoughton who find themselves down seven to nothing. Two runners on. Conlon's gonna go back to third base. They're bringing in the center fielder. The third baseman's gonna go play second and the second baseman's gonna head out to center. So you've got some work to do, Tom. We certainly do. A new pitcher for Stoughton and some defensive changes. We'll get you updated on all of them when we come back. The Hillers leading Stoughton seven to nothing here in the bottom of the fifth on H Cam. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. I'm Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, hi, Davis. Jake. We're the Hiller volleyball team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name's Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H Cam. Hey, I want to be Camp. We love, love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. Continuing on in the bottom of the fifth, a seven to nothing lead for the Hillers. Third pitcher of the game for Stoughton, Kian Swarezki well, moves it. to take over on the mound and Cam DeRosa, who was playing third base before, is now in center field. And it's a 1-0 count to McKenzie. The Hillers have batted around and plated five runs in this inning. Up the left side, foul, one and one. Well, the last time McKenzie was up, he hit a ball about 375 feet, and that left fielder chased it down for one of the better plays you'll see an outfielder make. Over shoulder. Ben almost lost that ball. Fouled away. Watch out, fans. Brady Conlon only lasted a third of an inning, giving up four runs and four hits. All runs were earned. Get a pinch runner, I think. One of the Doherty boys, maybe? So a pinch runner for Barker Hook. And that is going to be Pat Breton. Pat Breton. Let's see what kind of breaking pitch Swarzewski, Swarzewski has, pardon me. He goes with a straight fastball, he could get burnt. Well, it's looking more and more likely like there will be Hiller's baseball this weekend as that pitch is inside. Not much of a breaking pitch, so. Two ben and two. I'm sorry, Ben can sit on a fastball. Runners on first and second, one out. Swing and a miss there. McKenzie goes down, two away. Steve Simos will step in to the left-handed batter's box. His first break of pitch wasn't very good, but that was really good. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, nearly got away, but Nazaro able to keep it in front. So I'm happy Larry Sacklad, happy to have Hiller's playoff baseball for you. Joe Frackleton on camera here at Stoughton High School. Checking out second, runner back. The ball briefly got away, but picked up by the second baseman. Bottom of the fifth inning, the Hillers leading Stoughton seven to nothing. The Hillers are the home team here today as they are the higher seed. Coach Simos giving Breton some Simos gets a piece of this one over to right field, and it is going to be foul. Just foul. Coach Simos was giving some Breton some instructions because he almost got picked off second. Tell him how, long, how wide of a lead he should take. The winner.
winner of this game advances to take on the winner of Oliver Ames and Westwood in the South Division II Ooh. bracket here in the semifinals. It's been Akamak versus TBL. Look what I see out in center field. A very shallow center fielder. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, Nazaro is going to lose it briefly and Breton advances to third. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen anybody play Stevie Simos that shallow. Well, Simos uh, <laughs> might make them regret that decision. <laughs> Upstairs. I mean, now the right fielder's moved over 20 feet from the line where Stevie just hit it. But the center fielder's, I don't know, 100, 120 feet over second base. 3-1 is low, and Simos draws the walk. That'll load up the bases for the Hillers. Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder, will step in. He was involved in that beautiful bunt single he put on last time up. And he got hit. That's Ouch. going to score a run. Taking one for the team there. What's and the... it's an eight nothing Hillers lead. I didn't hear anything. Maybe it just got his shirt sleeve. Must... Loud enough for the umpire to hear. Yeah. Glassburn up to third, Simos to second. Cam Jarrett steps in. Down in there for strikes as the umpire. <laughs> I think we now understand his language. Hit in the air over to center, left center, and it's caught. And that will retire the side here in the bottom of the fifth, but not before. The Hillers plate six more runs, and they lead it eight to nothing as we head to the sixth inning on H cam. Top of the sixth inning, an eight nothing lead for the Hillers. Josh Fisher remains in the game. The Hillers played it six more runs in the bottom of the fifth. Swing and a miss. It's the leadoff man, George Currier at the plate. Well, Josh Fisher during that deluge of offense was hiding behind the dugout in the shade. Smart, didn't need to see the offense. That pitch just low, one and one. Well, the Hillers offense poured on the runs last inning. And this is hit in the air over to right field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Lead off single for Currier and Jacob Kaplan, the right fielder, will step in to the batter's box. Coach Simos knows the stakes here. He will have no problem whatsoever with the hook here. He wants to play Saturday. But Josh Fisher's got a lot of leash left to him. Certainly does. He's pitched well so far today. Checking at first. Almost got the runner, but he's back safe. At this point, I would just say get the out. You've only got... I don't know, six more routes to go. They'll check in again, runner back safe. First pace coach has really given Josh Fisher a very close eye. He smells a Bach. He'll deal and inside. One and oh. Kaplan has struck out both times at the point. Up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, throw to second for one, now the throw to first. It's going to briefly get away from Kelly, and now it's picked up by Simon. The runner trying to go to second, the throw over. They got him! They double him up anyway. That's hustle, 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 baseball, Stevie Simos. Running up the first baseline from his catcher's position, picks the ball up, they got by Kelly, and throws the runner out. Unbelievable. You don't even see that in MLB. 
Simos just knows what to do in any situation. Uh, that's why his dad's the coach. <laughs> that was brilliant. Mark that one down for the highlights. Oh, put a star next to that one. That was <laughs> unbelievable. What hustle by Stevie Simos. Robert Seaman steps in. Oh, man. Oh, that was a play. I don't know what you scored it, but. I scored that a four to three to two to four. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know if that's the right scoring, but we'll go with it. We've had two pickoffs today. We've had a four to three to two to four. <laughs> Uh, we've had a three to one pop up. You can't forget that one. Yeah, Remember that right. one? Yeah. <laughs> that was incredible. Three and O oh on Seaman. Man, Fisher isn't even Irish. There's a strike. He's got a horseshoe in his back pocket or something. That's some ridiculous defense. Fouled away, full count. Well, I'd say just about uh, every Possible part of the game thing. the Hillers have perfected in this one so far. Have they had a runner at third base yet? Yeah, they had. And there's strike three, got oh, him. Hit the strike dugout. three for out number three. And everything just going <laughs> the Hillers way. It's the Hillers, eight Stoughton, nothing. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth on H cam. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Hillers hoping to pick up right where they left off. They scored six runs in the bottom of the fifth. Ronnie Sheamus will start things off for Hopkinton. Third uh -oh. baseman steps in. And what an unbelievable defensive play by Stevie Simos last Ooh. inning. Crowd's still buzzing about that one. An overthrow to first base, but no worries. Stevie Simos was there to pick it up, throw over to second and get the runner to complete the double play. As Sheamus drives this one over to left field to the fence that'll drop in front. Sheamus around first, heading over to second. Is he gonna leg out a triple? No, he'll stay put at second, but it's a leadoff double for the third baseman. For the sophomore. I think Coach Simos talked to Josh Fisher in between innings. This is, you know, between me and you. And I think he's going to give him the ball to close this one out. He deserves it. He certainly does. He, he's over there meditating behind the dugout. He's pitched a tremendous game as Connor Kelly steps in. Line up and the pitch. And this is driven into right field. That'll get down for a base hit. Sheamus around third. He's going to try to score. The throw in is not going to be in time. It's a 9-0 Hillers lead. An RBI single for Connor Kelly. His third of the day. He's got the stroke down. He certainly does. He's just on fire with the bat in these playoff games so far as Brendan Kelly set to step in. But first, there'll be a visit to the mound from the... Head coach, give me the Mike ball. Moore, and we'll see the fourth Stoughton pitcher of the day. Well, <laughs> the Hopkins and Hillers bats have come alive, and things are looking good here in the bottom of the sixth. It's the Hillers nine, Stoughton nothing. You're tuned in to Hillers playoff baseball on H Cam. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkeys see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers' surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too. New pitcher in the game for Stoughton. And, uh... It's number two, try to get a name on him. I'm listed on the roster that I have. First pitch to Brendan Kelly is up high, one and oh. Yeah, they pulled him out of the crowd. Brendan <laughs> Kelly had a stand-up triple, a monster bomb his last time up. There's a strike, one and one. 
You can just see the de dejection written all over the faces of the Stoughton players. CJ, they know it's... C.J. Carpenter, the new pitcher for Stoughton. There's a strike, one and two. But yeah, it's certainly a tough situation for those Stoughton fans. Some bad body language going on out there. Swing and a miss. Out number one. I think Brendan Kelly just got the Bronx cheer from his uh, teammates on that 62 mile an hour heater. Got uh, Robbie Pagliuca stepping in. One on, one out for the Hillers, who have played it another run in this inning. They lead Stoughton nine to nothing. Only one out. Up high. Pagliuca heading to Amherst to the university, that big university out there, come September. I guess he knows my son. He says he'll say hello if he runs into him. There's a strike, one and one. Wind up in the pitch. Just outside, two and one. Well, Stoughton will be down to their final three outs next inning. Robbie Pagliuca goes through a pregame ritual. Coach John Zach, he swings his glove. Coach Zach throws the ball. He catches the ball in a swinging motion. It's been working for him. Inside and Pagliuca draws the walk. Kelly pushes up to second, Pagliuca to first, Cole Glassburn to the plate. What's the score out there, nine to nothing? Yep, that's a nine. I think uh, Cole Glassburn is minding having the Legion season be delayed a little bit. No, he won't mind. <laughs> Fouled away. He's getting a little greedy though. He, I don't know, the mercy rule 10 runs, possibly? I don't know, we'll find out. The Hillers are walking off the field. That means the game is over. That's right. This is hit in the air over to center field. It is caught, and the runners will stay put. Two away. Nothing but a long out for Cole Glassburn. Ben McKenzie will step in. Two on, two outs. McKenzie to the plate. The Hillers leading Stoughton 9 to nothing here in the bottom of the sixth. Well, Ben's had a couple of uh, batters to look at this pitcher. Inside. I just got a really good feeling about what he's gonna do to this baseball. Up high. Two if and oh. If it's in the strike zone. That left fielder is just creeping in. Doesn't he know? Outside. Third base is clear. If McKenzie reaches. Stevie Simos do up next. Oh. There's a strike. I think he had the take sign, Tom. What do you think? I think so. The 3 1. Fouled away. Full count. I lost that one in the sun. I think. Well, it almost hit that airplane flying by. So. Yeah, could have. They, I bet you, you know, those people up there can watch, watch the game. In-flight entertainment. As this is driven over to center field, way back, and it's past the center fielder. One run, one run is in. Here comes another run. Pagliuca coming around. McKenzie heading to third, and it's a two RBI triple for Ben McKenzie. Eleven nothing Hillers. Couple of stand-ups, Ben McKenzie and Brendan Kelly. Connor Kelly scores the first run and then Robbie Pagliuca makes it 11 to nothing. And the Hillers just one run away from putting the mercy rule in effect as Stevie Simo steps in. 
And he'll drive this one over to right field. This is going to be big trouble. Down it goes. McKenzie will score. And Simos rounding second. Ground heading double. over to third. And that is Too bad. going to be an RBI double for Simos. The umpire says go back to second. It's a ground rule double for Stevie Simos. And will the mercy rule come into effect, or are I they just going to play it out? Let's see. So oh, that was <laughs> that was crushed. Tommy Ambersoni set to step in. That would have been on the track if it was in Hopkinton. Well, I guess the they're going. Guess they're going to play it out here, since we're in the bottom of the sixth. There's a strike. Maybe tournament rules are different than regular season okay. rules. Swing and a miss. As the Stoughton fans are starting to march out. One and two. Well, the Hillers today just tremendous in all facets of the game. Well, they got their $7 worth of Stoughton fans, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs. Very good value for the Hillers, though. $7 for 12 runs and a total decimation of their opponent. The 2-2. Two -two. And this is hit in the air, foul territory, and out of the reach. Good hustle on the umpire. Oh. Wind up in the pitch. He'll drive this one over to right field. Could be trouble, but it is caught for the third out of the inning, but not before the Hillers plate four more runs. And it's a 12 to nothing lead as we head to the top of the seventh on HCAM. Top of the seventh, 12 to nothing Hillers. I would say that's a pretty comfortable lead, Larry. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, they're gonna, Throw Connor Kelly out there to close his normal spot, but Josh Fisher just can't say enough about that kid. A sophomore comes into a sectional semifinal and just stones the opponent. His pitching coach, John Miller, is going to be absolutely thrilled. He's been working with a lefty pitching coach, which is, they're not that common, lefties anyway, but to find a lefty pitching coach, he's going to watch this and be absolutely ecstatic. Certainly will. Jack Breslin is the new right fielder. An 0-1 count to James Ganess the third. And he'll get a piece of this one over to right field. It goes, and that is going to drop down for a hit. Ganess the third heading over to second, and he's safe. It is going to be a leadoff double. Michael Nazaro, the catcher, will step in. Jack Breslin out in right field just turned around and gave chase, but all for naught. Well, the uh, Stone Black Knights aren't going to go down without a fight <laughs> here in the seventh inning. Uh, I've never been to a high school game to see uh, a team score 12 runs and their last at bat just, just doesn't happen. It's gonna be a pinch runner. So a pinch runner for Stoughton. Well, the Hopkins and Ailers are three outs away from moving on to the sectional finals for their second time in the past three seasons. Or actually, no, it would be the first time. First yeah. time. They got skunked went, by New Bedford at that right. skunk game there. Down low. Connor Kelly closed Milton out on Monday. Made easy work of the Wildcats. Ooh, inside, two and oh. Right around second, no outs for Stoughton, who have quite a bit of work to do if they want to get back in this game. 12-0 lead for the Hillers. This is up the left side. That's going to trickle through for a base hit. 
And it'll be runners on the corners for the Black Knights. Cian Swarzewski will step in. Is it Cian or Cian? I don't know. Uh, it's, <laughs> I don't know. Spell his last name without looking. That's your challenge. I think it's uh, pronounced many different ways depending on uh, who's pronouncing it. That pitch down low, 1 and 0. Oh. Fouled away. Be nice to preserve the shutout, but at this point, who cares? A win is a win. One and one. Fouled away. One Base runner is taken off. Sort of a meaningless. Uh, Steal, if you want to call that a steal. Nobody's covering the bag. Stevie Simos won't throw down. And this is up the middle. That's going to get through for a hit. A run comes around to score. An RBI single for Swarzewski. And now the uh, Stoughton, what are they called? Black Knights. The Black Knights are down in their last two outs. So sacrifice there for Swarzewski. Lost sight of that one for a moment. Yeah, Gagan like will step in. No stolen base, unfortunately. Can't be credited with a steal. I was blinded by the sun. We'll strike one. One out in the inning for Stoughton. And on second, a run did score to break the shutout. One and one. For those of you who haven't seen Connor Kelly, he possesses a really, really good curveball. Strike two. Uh, like that one. He'll throw it three times in a row. The one, two, <laughs> tipped foul. Gagnon staying alive. He's not a thrower, Connor Kelly. He's a pitcher. He's got a really smooth delivery. Nothing herky jerky in his delivery. So two sophomores are toeing the mound today. One goes six innings and one will hopefully go the seventh. Inside, two and two. Well, you just wonder if there would have been a bit of a different story if Evan Jackman stayed in the game a little longer for uh. Stoughton. But this Hiller's offense is too much. Air strike three, and Simos will throw down, no problem. Two away. Pizarro does advance to third. Noah Johnson will step in. Yeah, he got fooled by that breaker. Breaker, breaker. That's Connor Kelly's uh, M.O. Hiller is one out away from advancing to the sectional finals. Oof, inside. Head hunt, head hunting. That's what you get for not giving us the mercy. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you get for having a neutral site game at a non-neutral site field. That's what you get. Oh, a number up the first baseline. Yeah, that is a fair ball. Kelly. To Kelly, to Kelly. There it is. Out number three, and that'll do it. The Hopkinton Hillers take down the Stoughton Black Knights by a final score of 12-1. to 1, A tremendously pitched game by Josh Fisher. A great win by the Hillers. And they are moving on to the South Division II sectional finals to take on the winner of Westwood 
and Oliver Ames, your player of the game. It's got to be Josh Fisher for that tremendous pitching performance out there today. Six shutout innings pitched by Fisher. And of course, there was a lot of offensive contributions as well for the Hillers. Connor Kelly went three for four at the plate, scored three runs, and drove in a run. A lot of tremendous performances here today by this Hillers team, who for the first time in a long time is advancing to the sectional finals as they take down Stoughton by a final score of 12 to one. Josh Fisher, the winning pitcher. Evan Jackman, the losing pitcher. The final score for the final time. The Hillers defeat Stoughton 12 to one. For Joe Frackleton on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Hopkins and Hillers Playoff Baseball on HCAM. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.